great. So I'm going to kick off. And uh, yeah, firstly, a, a warm welcome to you. My name is Laura Hill. Um, I head up Cloud Essentials um, in the UK. And uh, yeah, this is the, the third now in a series of webinars around Microsoft uh, and compliance designed to sort of help you tap into capabilities um, that Microsoft has to offer in, in 365 around compliance and uh, yeah, reducing your risk and really improving the way that you manage uh, the life cycle of content as it as it throws through um, through Microsoft 365. So um, at Cloud Essentials, our I suppose our passion in all of this is is facilitating that continuous journey of adoption in Microsoft 365, and helping our clients get to a point where they've got a a very sustainable approach to how they're playing out compliance within um, Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So today's focus is around Compliance Manager as a, a very specific set of tools within Compliance Center that uh, really puts you in the driving seat with your compliance controls and, and the progress you're making and, and the kind of templates that you're using, et cetera. Um, but our, I suppose our experience and, and where we are coming from with this webinar is that Compliance Manager is often very overlooked in our experience and it can be a real sort of catalyst to trigger off uh, accelerations in your compliance journey and actually keep that momentum going so it's uh, it's a powerful tool and you've probably got it already if you are on an enterprise SKU with your Microsoft 365 licensing so our aim here today is to get you a bit more familiar and confident with the functionality so that you can start actually getting some some value from it so the format for today, as as with our our series, is to uh, yeah give you that familiarisation by discussing the the capability, and woven into that will be some demonstrations of of, of the features, and then an opportunity to ask questions um, and yeah debate some of the issues maybe around some of the features. So I'm just going to do a short introduction uh, to Chris and Johan now, who are going to um, actually run the session. Um, uh, Chris champions our, our, our governance and our compliance solutions here at Cloud Essentials, and he comes from an auditing background. So you get the benefit of, of that kind of perspective as he works closely with Johan, who is going to um, navigate you through some of the, the, the demos today as the head of our, our cloud and migration. And he spends a lot of time with our clients actually sort of on the ground deploying Microsoft 365 compliance and security features. So we're going to be on mute for the delivery of presentation content for, for about 30 minutes, and then we're going to stop the recording. We're going to come off mute and please use that time as, a, as an open forum to bring your feedback, bring your challenges, uh, ask any questions and type in, uh, type in your questions into the chat as we go as well. Um, we've got a nice range of, of industries and, and, and roles represented here. Um, so please use that time to, to kind of engage in conversation with, with us and, and others after the presentation. So just very, very quickly, for those who don't know us already, um, for some context, Cloud Essentials are, are a Microsoft partner around the area of, of content management. So we help organizations really mature their approach to how they manage their content in Microsoft 365. And a big part of that is, is reducing your, your risk profile of your content, um, but also you know, helping migrate content into Microsoft 365, how to um, kind of manage it cost effectively over time, and ultimately how to sort of open up the, the value of the content and, and the ways you're collaborating in, in Microsoft 365 so that you can surface content um, to your business advantage. So that's what we're about. And this uh, webinar series uh, stems from the work that we do around kind of reducing your, your risk profile and working with you on that on that journey through compliance center so in this series of webinars we are gradually working our way through the microsoft compliance um, stack of features now known as the, the purview offering so if you missed our previous webinars um, we can 
put the links to them in the in the chat and send them to you. We've already covered information protection. We've covered insider risk. We're obviously here today to talk about compliance manager. Uh, coming up in September, we're going to focus on e-discovery, so helping you to navigate the search and discovery tools within Microsoft 365 um, and the the kind of how you take the output of that um, if you need to send that further downstream to, to legal counsel, et cetera, um, and work your way up, up through the kind of search features that Microsoft offer. So yeah, just to, just to further set the scene around Compliance Manager before I hand over to, to Chris to actually deliver the presentation today. Um, you know, all, all businesses have got to conform to, to standards, to regulations. They're increasing all of the time. Um, they're being adjusted and amended all of the time. And so the, the compliance landscape is increasingly difficult to uh, to map out. Um, and no doubt you're here today because you've made that investment in Microsoft 365. You know, content is growing, collaboration is growing. And with that comes these additional challenges of, of maintaining compliance across the environment. So, you know, how do you, how do you comply with the standards um, that you need to across Microsoft 365? You know, how do you find those gaps? Um, and when new regulations come in or amendments come in, um, you know, have you got the confidence to um, that, that you're covered or do you need to do something new? Do you need to do something different? And how do you demonstrate your stance? Um, you know, how do you actually prove that you are compliant or that you are making proactive progress um, that regulators demand or maybe maybe contractors demand or clients demand of you? And, you know, how do you prioritize what to tackle first um, in terms of, of new requirements and, and new features coming all of the time? Um, from the technology as well. So in our experience, um, we, 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 we bridge this gap between sort of compliance and, and technical teams around these issues. So we often find that compliance and, and governance teams don't often have the full picture or access to the technology like what's available in Microsoft 365. So they aren't perhaps aren't, aren't equipped enough to lead some of the initiatives that maybe you need to um, in, in the Microsoft environment to actually make improvements in, in how you approach compliance. But equally, it's not in the remit of the technical teams and those actually responsible for the day-to-day -day running of Microsoft 365 to be making those decisions on how to translate your compliance requirements into the deployment and actually pushing the buttons on on the controls within Microsoft 365. So the journey can get a bit a bit stuck. Um, so we're really pleased today that we've got this sort of nice balance of of compliance and technical roles represented here because that's very much what we're aiming for. Uh, you know, we really want to help compliance teams to get started quickly um, by showing you the uh, the sort of art of the possible, I suppose, within Microsoft 365 around compliance. Um, but also we want IT teams to understand the, the power in the features so that they can work a bit more constructively with, with counterparts in, in compliance and governance to um, kind of prioritize uh, feature deployment um, from, from a much more technical side. So yeah, Microsoft have invest, invested heavily in, in, in what's now called the purview suite of, of compliance tools. And yeah, as I said before, we, we think the compliance manager element is, is often not well understood or used, but the compliance scoring and, and the assessments can be a bit of a game changer uh, and a bit of breakthrough in in the kind of compliance journey and making progress. Um, so that's that's why we wanted to host this session uh, specifically on this tool set. So I'm going to hand over to Chris and Johan um, to to guide you through what the what the features are and what it's all about, um, and then we'll kind of loop back around with with lessons that we've learned and um, from from using Compliance Manager towards the end. So Chris, I'll hand over to you. Great, thanks, Laura, <clears throat> and welcome everybody. Sorry, I might sound a little uh, ropey. I'm just recovering from a bug, but uh, bear with me. Yeah, I guess the art of the possible and, and trying to make uh, compliance man manager better understood and 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 where where it's effective. I think um, we we're going to start with uh, so how compliance manager works and where it adds that value. Hopefully. Uh, we're going to talk a little about the shared responsibility model with PaaS and SaaS services like Microsoft and others. Um, we're also going to look at the key concepts around Compliance Manager because it's, you know, it's really important to understand how the scoring works 
and you know what it actually means when you're moving the needle needle on your compliance scoring so so that's important um, and then we're going to look at assessment templates we're going to look at premium and custom templates um, these are the these are provided to you or, or or you're able to adjust and are really the way that we we group your your governance and standard require the standards you need to meet we group those requirements together and it, it makes things a lot easier as Laura mentioned, we'll then end with an open mic, and yeah, please feel free to to really go for it with the questions there. Great. So, um, Purview Compliance Man Manager is a management tool within the Microsoft Purview Compliance Center in Office 365, um, and it's specifically built to help you improve your compliance posture by measuring your opportunity to protect data and comply with standards and regulations. Uh, according to a 2019 annual report from Thomson Reuters about the cost of compliance, they stated that there are over 220 updates per day with uh, on over a thousand regulatory bodies all over the world. So staying on top of this is a huge challenge without some help. <clears throat> we can find um, compliance manager from your regular office login in, in, a, in any web browser. So once you've got the correct permissions, um, you can select the compliance center from the app launcher, um, which must not be confused with the with Purview Compliance Manager. So there's Compliance Center and Compliance Manager, remember, within the Compliance Center. And here you'll find all the compliance tools like the e-discovery and some of the other sessions we spoke of er earlier, such as DLP and information protection and insider risk that Laura mentioned. Um, so those are all in the compliance center. The compliance manager blade can be found near the top and allows your organization to manage and measure that, that compliance journey and to stay on top of regulatory obligations as they change. This, it's usually we find replacing a spreadsheet within the compliance department, which is a fairly, a fairly common way um, that we see these things being managed. So the benefits of compliance manager are essentially fivefold. It allows you to assess your compliance posture against several international, regional, and national laws and standards, and also create a baseline from which to measure your progress going forward. You're also able to gain insight into Microsoft's internal control framework and see what Microsoft is doing to protect your data and comply with these standards and laws. This is especially useful as more and more workloads move to the Microsoft and other clouds. Not only does Microsoft make recommendations on how to comply with each of these laws and standards and how to leverage um, the technology itself, Compliance Manager also illustrates how implementation of one control can meet requirements of several other laws and standards that may apply to you. This obviously avoiding duplication of effort. As its name suggests, um, it, it compliance manager empowers you to manage your compliance journey, collaborate with compliance and security or technical teams, as Laura chatted about earlier, and it's no coincidence that we have a, a technical and, and somebody from more of a compliance background giving you this session today, because that, that is the idea. And obviously to stay current by documenting what controls have been implemented, identifying what steps need to be taken, and allocating responsibility for implementation to individuals within your organization. In addition to the templates, which are constantly updated and provided by Microsoft to manage your compliance with existing laws, Compliance Manager allows you to create custom templates or use universal templates for managing compliance with non with you know those all those technologies in the non Microsoft ecosystem. So it's not just a Microsoft tool. There's people, process, and technology. All of these things are in there, but of course, when it is on the Microsoft side, as we'll show you a little later on, there is some automated features around that. <clears throat> Finally, Compliance Manager becomes a secure repository for compliance documentation by enabling the upload and storage of these records into the tool, including any third party audit reports, providing a place to protect these vital documents and enabling you to demonstrate compliance should the regulator come around. It's also too important to remember that Compliance Manager is based on Microsoft's shared responsibility model for compliance. What this means is that when you use 
um, a SaaS offering like Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, and Azure, for example, Microsoft helps you address a portion of your regulatory requirements while you can expect to control your own information. They will, however, carry out responsibility for privacy protection and defense of the platform itself. Ultimate responsibility for defining and implementing the appropriate and available security features and controls such as identity and classification and training, however, remains with you. So as you journey from the on-prem world to the SaaS world, physical infrastructure and networking controls are taken care of by the service provider. So you don't need to carry the cost of those and establishing data centers or implementing the physical controls. As Laura mentioned earlier, one of the great things about Compliance Manager is that it is available to all enterprise subscriptions and premium templates are available on a per template basis. Um, and that, so not requiring you to buy really high SKUs if you're not ready for them on the Microsoft platform to get access to those templates. I'm going to hand over to Johan to run us through how you get access to Compliance Manager. I suspect some of you on the call today may not be from the, the IT office, um, and it's good to understand where you get that access um, from the admin team and some of the links to uh, Secure Score, which is likely already being used by your security team in the organization. Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> So Microsoft Purview Compliance Center has a built-in information role group administration area. Your tenant administrators can manage all Microsoft Purview compliance permissions and role group assignments using Azure Active Directory, but also for ease of use, they can also manage it directly within Compliance Purview Center. You can see a list of all compliance-specific role groups that should be assigned to the appropriate team members within your organization. But by filtering on the Compliance Manager specific role groups, you see four dedicated roles, role groups that can be assigned. Just waiting for you to update. There you go. The Compliance Manager Administrators role group has the most role permissions associated and should be typically assigned to the team member that will be responsible for configuring Compliance Manager, including the assessment templates. Then moving down, the role group with the least permission is the compliance manager reader. This role group is really associated to the individuals that must be able to only view the compliance manager area to track progress and per perhaps gather information around your assessments and documentation around your policy. Um, that in summary wraps up your permissions and structure around Microsoft Purview Compliance Manager. So Chris, back to you. Oh, sorry. Um, I also not yet, I to, yeah. <laughs> not yet. I need to cover off the security score integration also with Compliance Center. So majority of you would have heard around Microsoft security score. It's a rep representation of your organization's security posture and also comes with recommended improvement actions that can be implemented. Um, and the integration really comes with the technology improvement actions. You can see example here in the security score, we are required to enable um, self-service policy tree set. But if we switch over to the compliance center under the improvement actions, that same improvement action is also tracked in the compliance center as improvement action. So if we implement this action from a technology perspective, you'll have the increased points associated both on your security score and on the, your compliance score, um, as it's a single backend um, action that was, was followed. I think now I'm done, Chris. I think now it's back to you. Yeah, and I think that's an important point and, and, and keeps talking to um, that connection between security and compliance, which has always been very close and really not the, the, so that you're not duplicating effort, um, I think is the other is the other key point there. I just want to spend a few seconds on the Service Trust Portal. Um, transparency is extremely important, important to Microsoft and has been a key differentiator to other cloud service providers. As such, in the Microsoft Service Trust Portal, there are key reports um, that are made available to customers around their security controls. You'll also find these within the relevant areas in the Microsoft Control Center. Control. Um, um, in the Microsoft Control Manager. 
<clears throat> so these also include independent audit reports such as SOC and ISO 27001 reports, um, as well as reports of penetration and testing, uh, white papers, uh, all the information is also made available through the Compliance Center in the appropriate space. If we open Compliance Manager, we can see the points split between those achieved by Microsoft and your own. When we look into an assessment, we can also see the split between the actions that are your responsibility and those that Microsoft have taken. We can also see the implementation progress and testing details that have been met by Microsoft to meet those requirements. The other standards and regulations that may apply to this and uh, the same and some of the control and documentation if it exists in the final tab. In this case, um, we don't have the actual, we've got the testing information and we can see the dates around the testing information. Um, but in this particular control, we do not have the documentation just yet. Or there's no documentation that is currently applied to this particular control. So before we get started with the assessments themselves um, <clears throat> and those that are available to you in the Compliance Manager, let's take a quick look at some of the core content, the key concepts that make up an assessment. Actions are the building blocks of assessments. They can be technical or non-technical, and they are either managed by Microsoft in terms of their shared responsibility model or managed by you. Um, the customer, or in some cases managed by both of you. Technical, non-technical and operational actions, all there to create the protections we need from the standard or regulation we're trying to meet. Technical actions are completed by using um, technology and mechanisms contained within the hardware, software or firmware components of the system. Examples here would be multi-factor authentication, encryption, or something like role-based access control. <clears throat> Non-technical actions such as documentation, um, for example, is, is implemented through the policies and procedures that define the controls required. Here an example would be an information security policy or an internet communications policy. Operational actions are implemented by people and processes rather than systems. So basically everything else. Um, and examples here would be providing an, and providing something like anti-malware training. So actions may be Microsoft managed, customer managed or shared. One or more actions make up a control, which is a requirement of a law standard or regulation. A control determines the people um, to put to be put in place to perform the task, uh, the process, uh, which are comprised of the steps or the actions that together produce the process control. Um, and lastly, the technology and its configuration and use by those people. Controls are grouped into control families. Um, and these families are in line with most of those laws and standards that are mapped in Compliance Manager. In this case, we're looking at a control family and controls for the EU GDPR, for example. Assessments are made up of several controls from the regulations, laws, or standards. As you complete an improvement action within an assessment, your score increases and you improve your compliance with that particular standard or law. Assessment templates enable quick creation of assessments. And there are over 300 uh, laws and standards available. As discussed, some templates are included in in uh, in your package, and some of those are premium templates which must be purchased individually. Uh, 
So the assessment template is made up of the control families, in scope solutions, and the score received, but more on the scoring in a minute. We're just going to go through um, and look in this case, this would be a premium template. Um, it's specific to a region. There are a number of regional templates, obviously, because they're specific to that region. The only one that is um, available to you for at no cost, which is regional, is the EU GDPR. Um, but the rest of the regional templates must be purchased. All right. So when creating assessments, they need to be assigned to a group or they will just remain in the default group. Some organizations actually prefer to leave it in the default group um, and groups can be configured uh, to be regional or by department, etc. Once groups are created, you'll be able to filter the dashboard by group to get a more granular view of your compliance posture and assess your scoring on a group basis. Uh, we see this most often, as I say, used in regional requirements where you may need to see how you're doing in Europe or in the US um, and obviously the ability to go in and then filter via those groups changes um, you know, your results and changes where you are in your process and allows you, gives you that granularity. So just quickly on some, just take a quick look at the scoring um, in Compliance Manager, because this is ultimately what, what, what your baseline is made up of. Scores for scoring purposes, actions are classified as mandatory, discretionary, yeah, in combination with preventative, detective, and corrective. Each action is allocated a score based on the potential risk involved. Mandatory actions cannot be excluded or bypassed. So this is an example here would be turning on or scanning downloaded files and attachments for virus detection. Um, discretionary actions uh, rely on users to adhere to the organization's policy. An example here would be conducting exit interviews on termination. Preventative actions <clears throat> address and prevent specific risks, so concealing information with a lock screen or preventing unauthorized, so preventing unauthorized parties from seeing information that they shouldn't be seeing. Uh, detective actions monitor your system to identify irregular conditions or behaviors that may be an indicator of risk. An example here would be excessive download activity or failed login attempts or, or the uh, common one, um, impossible travel. Corrective actions aim to mitigate or lessen the adverse effects of a security incident and to restore your system to an operational state like remediating vulnerabilities as an example. Scoring will also be affected by whether the control is technical um, or operational. Non-technical points are added once per action, regardless of how many groups it belongs to, um, and non-technical actions points are added to the compliance score at a group level meaning that if an action exists in multiple groups, the actions points value is added each time the action is implemented within that group. Also bear in mind that um, all actions must be implemented and must have passed um, test status for that scoring to be achieved. So just to recap, each MS action is counted once across all assessments, each technical improvement action is counted once across all groups, and each non-technical improvement action is counted once per group. And again, it's important to remember that they must be, uh, the comp uh, they, they, that they must be uh, implemented and passed from a testing perspective.
So even if you've never been into Compliance Manager or set anything up, the Microsoft default uh, data protection baseline is already collecting signals from your Microsoft 365 solutions um, in the environment. And the improvement actions you need to prioritize and the points you have accumulated are already there. The default data protection baseline is a great place to start your journey as it draws elements from primary NIST, CSF, um, ISO, uh, FedRAMP, and the EU GDPR. In particular, the NIST CSF correlates well to much of what we find in the Microsoft Security and Compliance Center. It calls for the actions that create resilience and compliance manager is certainly a great place to start formalizing that process. All right, Johan, I think I'm going to be handing back over to you to take us um, through some of the actions and controls. Thanks, Chris. So here you can see we assigned these as our compliance manager and to assign an improvement action, you simply select it from the list of actions to open it. You'll then scroll down once it open on the left hand side and just click on the sign button. From here, you'll get a list of individuals on your organization and simply find the individual you want to assign the action to and click on the sign button. After we switch to my screen or my profile, you would have seen that I've received an email about the assignment action. Um, if I click on the button to open up um, the action, it takes me directly into the Compliance Manager Improvement Action, where I can find more information of what must be configured and also access the configuration area directly from here. So with action to open. So there's all the information around the improvement action. If I click on Launch now, I go directly into the configuration area within your tenant. This improvement action requires me to set up an anti-phishing policy for our organization. So let's just quickly go ahead and finish the configuration. Once the configuration is done, as Chris mentioned, I need to go back to the compliance manager improvement action to update the status of the improvement action. So here I can either go use the email or I can switch back to the compliance center in compliance manager and look for the improvement action. You have the ability then to filter on assigned to um, and also other criteria to find the improvement action that's, that's a, a task assigned to yourself. So if you open it, you see on the left hand side, I'll need to click on implementation details, change the status, add information around the implementation, also select the implementation date of the improvement action. Um, as Chris mentioned, you also need to complete testing before you would actually complete the implementation action. And for testing, there are two options. As you see on this example, um, if I scroll down on the left hand side, this is a manual assign, manual testing. So it means a technical resource would need to go through and actually complete testing to validate the configuration and then update the relevant information about the testing to prove that the action was completed. There are um, improvement actions available that do have automated testing um, assigned to them. An example of that is the self-service password reset improvement action that Chris assigned to me earlier today. If you open that, you'll see under testing, the action is automatic. And that means Microsoft will in the back end assess the configuration of the setting in your tenant and update the status of the testing once every 24 hours. So once the testing is passed and, and, and you implement the action, you would then get the score associated to your compliance assessment and template. Back to you, Chris. Great, thanks, Jan. 
So <clears throat> we're going to just talk briefly about creating custom, custom templates, adjusting um, and extending templates. And we'll also talk a little bit about updating. As we mentioned earlier, <clears throat> Microsoft is continually updating the included and premium templates as the regulations change. If we go into our assessment title, we can see the pending updates notification by selecting uh, by, by selecting the assessment we want to update. Um, we have the option to review the details of the update. Um, we can also choose to update the template or download it as a new template um, or download the current template before we update. That's obviously in case you you worried about the changes that 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 will come in to to the process that you're already in. To edit or extend an existing template, <clears throat> we can start by selecting um, an existing template we want to use as a base. Um, we can check the details and, and even go into the articles that, that make up the regulation and template. So, <clears throat> you know, there may be a number of controls in this template which are common uh, to the new or custom regulation that I want to build a compliance template for. So there's an extraordinary amount of information available to me. Um, I can have a look. I go, yes, I want to start with this template as a base. <clears throat> we can then download or export this template schema as it currently exists. This will export it out to Excel, um, into an Excel spreadsheet, which is which is ultimately the way the schema is built in the back end. And we can use this as a base from which to start or from which to customize the template going forward. If you look into the document, you'll see all the control families and controls inside this um, schema. To create a new template, <clears throat> we can choose create a new template, obviously, and uh, do this from scratch using a base schema or, again, start with an existing template that may, may contain those controls that I already want in place. And obviously, the control families and actions common to our new requirements and then move forward from there. Right, so I think that was a, a quick overview of Compliance Manager. Hopefully we've given you a taste of, of what can be achieved. I think for us, where we've seen it to be, you know, hugely useful is, um, is in that collaboration space between IT and compliance and also putting the information at the fingertips. You'll have noticed in Compliance Manager and in Security Center, there are links to more information. So it's a great way for non-technical groups to you know, educate themselves on what's available within the technology. And it's a great way then to collaborate with the technical team and also you know, get, the, get the benefit of what the technical team may have already done on the security side of things. So with that, I'm going to hand over to you, um, Laura, before I think we're going to go to questions and I think you're going to top and tail us. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so, um, yeah, as Chris is saying, I suppose what, what we're hoping to, to convey in this session is that, you know, here's a piece of functionality that you can really use to decrease your risk profile as, as with the whole purview offering, but um, Using Compliance Manager is uh, a great way to to kind of also influence your your process and and how you are orientating people around your compliance journey with Microsoft 365, um, and is a, a really useful tool to, to to help you get more value from the money that you are investing in Microsoft 365 in terms of what's available to you. So yeah, use the tool um, to to collaborate and join up that conversation between IT and 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 compliance roles, use it to, to accelerate your journey, use it to build your business case, perhaps for, for higher license SKUs, if you if you know that that is what the organization needs, especially as it, it goes on a, a rapid 
growth curve as many organizations are with Microsoft 365 in terms of the sheer volume of content growing in it, the sheer volume of collaboration happening around it. Um, you know, use it to 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 demonstrate, to be part of, of how you're proactively um, putting together your audit responses um, and, and just kind of defending your, your stance and, and how you're being proactive. And yeah, use it to, to keep updated, to, to move from maybe manual, maybe quite siloed processes and, and places for managing your compliance um, audits and scoring and tap into those, those templates. Just moves on to the next slide, Chris. Um, just wanted to, um, uh, before we open up the floor, just to say that um, Cloud Essentials, we do offer advisory around Compliance Center and Compliance Manager. Our menu of, of compliance solutions um, is very varied. It ranges from some, what can be quite one-off kind of workshops, especially some of the ones that um, maybe Microsoft might subsidize for you um, for us to deliver to very flexible, very tailored services and no one size fits all. Every client is at a completely different point on their compliance journey in Microsoft 365 and has a completely different level of resourcing around it. So as we've sort of evolved our solutions in line with our clients as they grow, um, a big shift for us now is, is playing a bit more of a, a kind of specialist, maybe outsourced advisory role um, as an extension of your team uh, to help kind of keep momentum going, or maybe just to ramp up resourcing for times when you need to um, get a bit more active within Compliance Center and with Compliance Manager. So yeah, maybe you already have a, a rhythm of, um, of of kind of sessions where, where IT and compliance teams get together to talk about Microsoft 365. Um, we We've been able to, to kind of sit as part of may, maybe an advisory board um, to those kind of sessions to help maybe explain what some of these actions mean, uh, what the implications of them are, um, to give recommendations on on what next to consider in, in a progressive kind of roadmap. Um, but yeah, other examples where we've played a bit more of a role are new starters into your compliance teams, giving an induction into Microsoft 365 capability. Maybe there are times when you need to ramp up um, your uh, your scoring as a contribution towards assessments. Um, maybe we've we've helped in scenarios where there are mergers and acquisitions. So part of our business I mentioned earlier is in in migrations, and we do tenant to tenant migration. And uh, often a part of that is is baselining and leveling up the compliance stance between two organisations as they they merge. Um, and also maybe from a contractual point of view, we've we've worked with a client who needed to accelerate very quickly their um, their compliance stance within Microsoft 365 in order that they could contract for um, development of the COVID vaccine. So yeah, it, I suppose it's it's uh, knowing that there's a team here that you can tap into for um, what can be quite a, a specialist um, role uh, in in progress with the Compliance Centre and kind of just joining up that conversation between IT and compliance.